Do you remember the old Trump thing of we're going to build a wall and uh, make the Mexicans pay for it? Yeah, we built a bowl and made the skewer kids pay for it. <laughs> So yeah, my name is Rob Bannister, um, I run the House Escape Park in Sheffield, um, have done for heading towards 26 years now. Got to about 22, I think, 21, 22, got really bored of working for other people. So I put myself on the dole for a year. <laughs> We've got the keys to the place in December 97. Um, it wasn't until May in 98 that we opened, not because we weren't ready, um, but because of a guy from Sheffield <laughs> Health and Safety Department who walked in here went, what the bloody hell is this? Had no, nothing to go with, there was no books written, there was basically us, Wakefield and Radlands. His initial suggestion was that we should cover the ramps, the floor and the walls with the uh, rubber matting that you use in playgrounds. Um, but that's the reason, we would have been open in February, but he kept coming back and then demanding something different and then coming back and demanding something different uh, to the point where it got a bit beyond a joke. But fortunately, uh, Graham said, look, I'm not in charge of rent until you open which if he hadn't done that would have been dead before we started. Yeah, hard work, hard work and bum luck. <laughs> it was um, very much not like this, shall we say. We, we, we spent the whole money on wood and it still wasn't enough to fill this building. The mini ramp originally, the wood for that came from an event that Budweiser did at Hillsborough Leisure Centre, um, which we then blagged afterwards. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's just been more of an evolution. I mean, we kind of obviously kept it skate. We'll always be focused on that, that's what we do. We're, we're all skateboarders down here and it's what we do, but it's, if we were still what we were then, I wouldn't expect anyone to come in. It's just kind of, the place evolves naturally and organically. It's just about keeping moving. If, if you don't keep moving, you die. And we're kind of fortunate in some ways in as much as we make everything ourselves. So when it comes time for a build or a change or whatever, we just get out there and get cracking with it. But it means that if, yeah, we just feel like doing something that week. We feel like a new mobile piece. I'll pop up to the workshop and just knock something up. Um, I try to do at least one major build a year um, just to keep the place moving, keep the place fresh. Uh, about f seven years ago, we, we surpassed uh, furniture making for the largest use of um, maple in the world. So I'm always a bit conscious of making sure that we kind of you know, reuse, recycle, and try and keep ourselves, you know, what, our, our impact to a minimum. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an idealist, but I'm also a pragmatist. <laughs> And I knew that, especially in, like I say, we're talking about 1997, 98 here, uh, the Sheffield skate scene at that point, we all knew to the by name still. It really wasn't that big. So I recognised from day one that we would have to have more than that. At the time we opened in the 90s, blading was still huge. Um, so from day one, the only people letting here were blades and skateboarders. We then got to, was the ramp up of the scooter craze in about 10, 11, 12, when, well, it was dead by 12, weren't it? 10, 11, we started letting scooters in. Sorry. Um, just because needs must. Well, there's a lot of the current batch of skate parks exist because of it. And they went, ooh, no oh I. And then obviously realized when that craze died out that these places don't manage to make any money. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, we, we did the, the scooter craze, we rode that and uh, spent the money on a bowl. <laughs> and they don't even ride it, whoops. Um, but I've always fancied a concrete bowl. I just thought it'd be a fun thing to do. It was, it was designed to be a bit intimidating. It was designed to be fast. The, the comp after we built it, um, we did a speed gun challenge. So we did a flat one, flat one out here. And then we went, right, speed gun in the bowl. Uh, Moggins got up to 28 miles an hour in it. <laughs> it's just like, damn, <laughs> fair enough. If I ran this place with an economic head on, we'd have never built that. We should have used that room for more small stuff, junior stuff, whatever. It could certainly pay its way a lot better as a street mini house or something like that, but yeah. It was, it was, it was a heart move, not a head move. Certainly during those early days when there was less indoor parks, we had most of the sort of bigger names in the UK industry turn through. Um, do you remember the new wood thing that Sidewalk used to do? That was like a sort of um, a skate park's open, so we'll do a little, little article, yeah. Uh, the main pitch was John Rattray doing a switch heel over the hip, if I remember rightly. The first person to kind of come through here as a little tiny kid and get huge is Jerome. And obviously he went on to do huge things in skating and he's now back in the city, which is nice. So we do see him occasionally. Still skates, still, still better than pretty much anybody. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll disappear, not do anything for the, you don't see him six months and he'll come down and still make it look gorgeous. 
trying to think who else has gone to get the names on boards that have been down here. Obviously, Matlock, he's the most recent one. Again, he started down here when he was about seven years old. Broyd was with us for about three, four years while he was doing his degree at Sheffield. So he sort of became local for a bit and then toddled off. Uh, Dave was, again, probably about 10, 11 when he first started coming down here with yeah, Henry and a few other people. I don't know. I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, thanks to my yeah, wife for putting up with me in this place and all the <laughs> put through over the years. Um, the support of uh, yeah, the people who initially helped get it together, people like Tom, people like Joe Knighty, uh, people like Hat who were here right in the early days when we couldn't afford to pay anyone. It was basically like just blagging mates to come down and sort stuff out. Um, all the people who worked here over the years. Thanks to Charles for setting up the Prince's Use for the Business Trust for getting us here in the first place. Thanks, King. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's so, so many, so many people and so many lives and all the people who've come through and paid for an hour and keep the roof over our head and the electricity on the lights. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's, been, a, it's been a journey. <laughs> We've got some stiff competition. Five other teams that are all hungry, like the wolf. So if we want to win this prize, we're going to think outside the box. So with the budget to spend and the ideas in mind, we thought about blowing it all on elaborate sets and ridiculous CGI. 